President Trump is claiming once again that his campaign was spied on during the 2016 presidential election. The president tweeted this morning, nothing like this has ever happened in American politics. It's an assertion Attorney General William Barr also made during Capitol Hill testimony earlier this month. Barr spoke to Fox News for his first interview since the release of the Mueller report, and he says there are still unanswered questions about what started the Russia investigation in the first place. I think there's a misconception out there that we know a lot about what happened. Uh, the fact of the matter is Bob Mueller did not look at the government's activities. He was looking at the, whether or not the Trump campaign had uh, conspired with the Russians. But he was not going back and looking at the counterintelligence program. And uh, we have a number of uh, investigations underway that touch upon it, the main one being the Office of Inspector General that's looking at the FISA warrants. But uh, as far as I'm aware, no one has really looked across uh, the whole waterfront. Meanwhile, a federal judge has ordered the release of some of the material Barr's team withheld when the Mueller report was released. That includes possible contact between the White House and former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn about his cooperation with the special counsel. Paula Reed is at the White House with more on what we can expect to find out. This is the first time a judge has ordered the Justice Department to reveal portions of the Mueller report that had previously been kept secret. A Flynn and his attorneys say there were multiple instances where folks connected either to Congress or the administration reached out to Flynn and his team in a way that could have impacted his cooperation with the Russia investigation. Now, the public version of the Mueller report reveals that one of those people was one of the president's personal attorneys who reached out to Flynn's team in November 2017 and left a message. In this message, this attorney asks for a, quote, heads up if Flynn had any damaging information about the president. Now, Flynn has a recording of that message, and a judge has ordered that a transcript of the message be released to the public. Now, Flynn is currently awaiting sentencing for lying to the FBI about his contacts with Russian officials before President Trump took office. But Democrats are already seizing on these new details to renew their calls for the full unredacted Mueller report to be released to the public. Anne Marie. All right, Paula, thank you. So CBSN legal contributor Keir Dougal is here. He's a former assistant U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of New York. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So listen, let's start a little bit with uh, what Paula said right, right at the very end there, that Flynn has a recording of, of one of the president's attorneys um, asking for a heads up. There's a, we don't know what, the, what the, the actual wording was, but the judge has ordered that a transcript be released. If it is shown that a member of the administration tried to influence um, uh, influence Flynn's cooperation with the special counsel. What are the possible consequences? Well, they're very severe if that's shown. That's a big if. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, if I understand the context of this uh, communication when it occurred, it occurred right at the transition between when Mr. Flynn, had, who had previously been uh, part of the defense group, you know, a defendant, somebody resisting the government. Um, under those uh, scenarios, it's very common that uh, lawyers representing different defendants will uh, share information. It's, that's very common when right. they do that. However, if, if you do that, if you decide to do that, the moment when a particular client leaves and goes changes teams to help the government, you have to then sort of say, I can't speak to the defense folks anymore. We can't share information. Makes sense. Uh, right. So yeah. during this, it's during this transition that I understand that this communication occurs. And um, so some of this uh, yeah. could be very serious if the effort is, you know, um, you shouldn't do that. Stop. Um, we don't want you to remember, you know, we're going to take care of you. That all sounds like obstructive conduct. Right. Um, on the other hand, if it's simply like um, you, you, okay, where you can't um, share any more information, fine. Um, but uh, understand, we can't share information back with you. It's hard to know what the context of this, of this conversation is. Mm -hmm. um, and when you and I were speaking earlier this morning about this, um, we, you know, the, the key parts of this are in the Mueller report, this is a communication from an attorney. And we don't know whether or not President Trump, President Trump's personal attorney, whether President Trump directed that communication, knew about all of those details. We just don't know that yet. Mm -hmm. um, it, th that information between President Trump and the personal attorney would likely be uh, covered by President Trump's attorney-client privilege unless, um, in fact, there was an effort at obstruction that was occurring 
through that messaging. Mm -hmm. um, and then the key there is you cannot use an attorney to commit a crime and then try to hide it. Mm. So the, the, the privilege does, does not apply. There's something called the crime fraud exception. Um, and, and Mr. Mueller noted that, uh, that uh, because of the attorney-client privilege, they didn't pursue the, how that communication originated which uh, leaves some open questions for us as to whether or not Mueller thought this was an appropriate conversation and so the attorney-client privilege did apply or whether he thought that it didn't apply because there was wrongdoing occurring here but chose for reasons that aren't explained simply not to pursue it. Right. So we have uh, this open set of questions what we you know what so, we don't know somehow I feel just because it sounds like what you're describing is communication that has to be really overt somehow I feel like we're even if what if, if the transcript is released we're not gonna yeah. be it's gonna be clear as mud is yeah. what we're trying to say yeah exactly I think <laughs> um, that's right so let me ask you this uh, Jerry Nadler and House Democrats they also want to see more of the redacted stuff well some of the, all of the redacted stuff um, the White House has sort of pushed back and said the the Judiciary Committee doesn't have the authority to make these requests they're both arguing that the law is on their side. Who's right? Yeah, um, that's that's not correct. Look, um, the the House has uh, the authority under our constitutional three branch system to do oversight, and they have to inform themselves so that they can pass laws and they can. Um, they're tasked. Part of their job is to review the administration's. Uh, conduct right. and, and make sure things are running well. So they, they clearly have the authority, um, they have the subpoenas, uh, they can call witnesses, they clearly have that authority. Um, the, the White House here is resisting, um, as I understand it, based on certain privileges. Mm -hmm. um, those will get hashed out in court, um, but the key thing in Mr. Nadler's letter is that is that he's describing an accommodation process. I think earlier on TV he said he wanted every single document that, yes. Mu that Mueller had ever collected. In the letter we learn, no, he's, he's restricted that request through this sort of negotiating process to only uh, information that's referred to in the, directly in the Mueller report. So that narrows the scope of the request significantly. And as far as the grand jury information that I think is the basis for the White House saying you're asking us to do something unlawful. Well, it's, it is unlawful to turn over grand jury material without authorization. But what Nadler has asked for is that the department cooperate and make a joint application to the court to get that authorization. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the sort of the top line story, I think coming from uh, Mr. Cipollone, is not c catching all the nuance here. Mm -hmm. That there's, a, there, there's clearly a process underway where the Congress is trying to negotiate with the White House over a reasonable resolution here. Hmm. Okay, uh, so before we let you go, I got to ask you a question about what we heard A.G. Barr talk about. Yeah. You know, he is, wants to investigate the investigators, and he says that he has questions about whether government officials abused their powers in the early stage of the Russia investigation. What sort of leeway does the Justice Department have in terms of inv pursuing investigations, launching investigations? I mean, doesn't he sort of need an indication that there was impropriety illegal impropriety to start an investigation or can he just sort of pick and choose whatever he wants look the, the our, as a general matter yeah. our attorney general should always be looking to ferret out abuse within the government as a general matter um, there's got to be smoke though right well look we we have seen some um, some texts from uh, Peter Strzok and okay. Lisa Page that are um, disquieting. They, okay. they simply are. Mm -hmm. um, what I what I think is problematic here is that the Attorney General uh, is doing this publicly, uh, doing this in a way that is uh, during his congressional hearing he said. Um, I, I'm concerned about spying, but then he went on to say, well, I didn't, I don't know anything about any unauthorized surveillance. Mm. So um, it seems to be that he um, perhaps is making statements in public like this in a way that are uh, perhaps targeted at an audience of one. Right. Um, you know, because by questioning the process without providing, without any proof, because the, the investigation hasn't really started, but by questioning the process, he sort of taints it without having to back it up. Right. Well, the, you know, there are um, there's there's certainly reasons why an attorney general would want to make sure that the department is functioning according to law. Right. OK, that, that's crystal clear. Mm -hmm. But why you would do this in public without before you have all the facts, mm -hmm. why would you make these suggestions? 
Um, certainly for political reasons, we see President Trump, uh, you, you mentioned his tweets earlier. Of course, he's got every reason to, to make those suggestions for political reasons. Yeah. But the attorney general is bound by law. He should be independent um, and he should be protecting his organization as much as ferreting out wrongdoing. And to make suggestions of, you know, abuse of power and spying from our premier law enforcement agency without fully conducting the investigation without having real facts behind it um, is, is very concerning. Mm -hmm. Here, thank you very much. Thank you.